like to thank Subscriber Majestical for these uh, for these pretty amazing but sort of creepy glasses which have a little camera right here and I'll probably use this to film some more stuff in the future but for today's video I'm going to talk about extreme astrophotography we don't normally associate the word extreme with astrophotography but a lot of the things we do are extreme extreme temperatures extreme focal lengths and in this case extreme exposures today I'm going to show the difference between a one minute and a one hour exposure my name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching star stuff <laughs> Huge shout out to the sponsor of today's show, High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific have supported this channel for a long time. They have a price match guarantee and they fully support their equipment. They're an American astronomy vendor and they stock basically all brands. It's really great. So whatever your astrophotography journey, whatever your brand preference, whatever your price preference, you can get it at High Point Scientific. Tell them I sent you. In my last video, I incorrectly labeled uh, NGC 253, which is a sculptor galaxy, as M33 and so many of you picked up on that in the comments and lambasted me for it which is fine I deserve that and uh, I admitted to it whenever something like that happens in one of these videos I will pin one of those comments or pin my response because I will say incorrect things all the time but I want to own up to that but the reason I had labeled it incorrectly M33 was because M33 was on my mind because I was actually in the middle of shooting it it took about three weeks. It took so long because of the awesome weather we're having in Australia. But I finally got all the data I needed and I put together this lovely image, M33 Triangulum. poor weather sometimes the worst weather is not clouds or rain it's when you can see the stars but the seeing just isn't great and this affects deep sky astrophotography as well now a little trick I've picked up is if you think that the seeing is not 100% but you're just not sure maybe you keep losing the guide star or maybe you're just not sure if what's happening up there is super clear a good trick I've learned is to grab my iPhone and point it straight up towards the stars and take an image. It might do a three second exposure or a 10 second exposure, but it will show you the sky in a way that your eyes can't see. And it will reveal a lot of that high cloud that you might not be able to see with your own eyes. We're in this little in-between time where the stuff straight above me is pretty boring, apart from the Helix Nebula, which is right up, but I've already done the Helix Nebula this season already. So I decided to do some test exposures. These aren't finished astro photos or anything. I just whacked a color camera on to do some quick tests. And here is. Now this is sort of an insane thing to do. There's no way I can collect enough data over the course of a night to make a usable image. However, there's something to be said for a single long exposure. It worked out better than I expected. But the first thing you'll notice probably is that I've got this big dark patch in the corner. That's actually the prism for my off-axis guider. Uh, when you're using off-axis guiding, you want to position that prism at the top of the sensor. If your sensor is in landscape mode, the prism should be somewhere at the top of the bottom, so it's not hitting any of the corners. The other thing you'll notice is that I still have a problem with eggy stars here. And I am still hyper-tuning my mount, but I think there's something wrong with my CGX and I need to get a new mount. The other thing you'll notice straight away is the 60 minute image just has a lot less noise. Uh, I haven't stacked it or anything, but because we're doing this long exposure, it's allowing the pixel wells to fill up so much that we get a real lift in the signal over the noise. All the noise is still in there. It's just way lower than the rest of the signal. So even with a gentle stretch, we're seeing a much cleaner image. So there is something to be said for taking longer exposures. Now, because I'm on a color camera here, even the stars aren't blowing up as much as I thought they would be. You are getting a lot less signal when you're using a color camera because only one third 
or one quarter of the pixels are registering a signal at any one time. But that's not the only difficulty with long exposures like this. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to do a long exposure. And I don't mean technically. If you can take a one minute exposure with guiding, you can take a 60 minute exposure. It's literally just changing the setting. As long as you're polar aligned and your gear is working okay, you can take exposures as long as you like. But we need to find a nice balance between taking really long exposures and having enough of them to stack to really boost that signal to noise ratio and average out that random noise in our images. Now I've also taken a graded series of these long exposures uh, as I was sitting there watching Netflix. So you get a bit of a sense of how the SNR improves and how the image changes depending on those exposure lengths. But now let's try some actual detailed image analysis. Okay, here we've got our images side by side. Um, 60 seconds here, obviously, and the 60 minutes here. Uh, let's have a look at the histogram. If I check the 60 second version, you can see the histogram is pulled right up to the left here. And in order to pull out all of that data, I don't want to stretch it. If I go to the one hour version, I actually have to pull it back less. So we don't stretch it as far. And you'll note that the peak is much wider. There's more darks in here and there's more lights in here. And that means that we have a greater dynamic range across the whole image. So you're actually going to get more of a difference from dark to light in each of these images. And it's clear that there's way more detail in here. I mean, even in this, these little areas here, I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15 stars just in here alone. Uh, and if I come to the same area there, they're all gone just disappeared in the noise or not picked up just because there wasn't enough photons to raise above that noise at all. If we look at the stars themselves, I mean, they appear to be blown out here, but both of these images are auto stretched. So this is not blown out at all, actually. In fact, even if we go into here, this seems white and very blown out. But if I turn off the preview, turn off the stretch on both of these images, uh, you can see we can barely see stars anymore here. Uh, this star is barely getting up it's nowhere close to full well at all. Uh, and these ones, they seem pretty close, but they're not. And in fact, there's a really great visualization in PixInsight. Here's a 3D analysis of the one hour exposure. And you can see these spikes here, are little hot pixels all over the image, which was a huge issue actually for this long exposure. It has a lot more hot pixel noise than anything else. But you'll notice these stars, the main big stars, they're not flat. They don't look like those World of Warcraft bluffs or those Grand Canyon bluffs that you see with the, with the flat floor on top. Uh, these are actually fairly curved, so I don't think I'm even blowing out the stars here. And with careful processing and obviously star reduction and managing the way you bring up that white level, the stars don't have to be blown out at all. This is actually pretty good. Some of the brighter ones definitely do appear to be flat though. See these ones here? These ones are definitely blown out but unless you're shooting an object with really bright stars you're not going to see a lot of this there's only a handful in this image and most of the core stars are actually fine if you're interested in that visualization by the way it's just in the script render 3d plot view and of course the other thing to mention with uh, with any long exposure is you're going to get satellites uh, every satellite that zips through in that hour is going to imprint itself on the image this doesn't make too much of a difference for the small ones but big bright ones you aren't going to get around that so you still need enough exposures enough long exposures to be able to average out this stuff when you do your stacking and sigma clipping and whatever all in all though i'm extremely impressed at how much detail you can get out of a long exposure with this one single sub uh, there are little faint fuzzy galaxies in here which are just beautiful to see and if you're going for a magnitude record long exposures and stacking are the way to go of course if you have the time and the patience I hope you enjoyed this video about extreme astrophotography and I hope all your exposures are as long as you can possibly get out of your equipment. If you're in between target or just have a test night where you can do this sort of thing, it really pays to put your gear through its paces and try a few of these little experiments just to see what the gear is capable of and how much you can get away with. Anyway, my name is Dylan O'Donnell. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.